So it was just announced right before I started recording this video that Optic had made some changes to their roster in which Shazam had been removed from the team or he mutually split from the team. And they brought in a Spanish player to replace him by the name of Mixwell, who some people will know uh, from his recent play with G-Bots, as I think most people would probably know him uh, from what they saw at the ESL Barcelona Invitational recently, just a couple of months ago. Uh, but outside of that, he probably is going to be a lesser known name than some of the other people in the pro scene. So I thought I'd make a video to talk a little bit about this roster change. Uh, and just kind of dissect it and kind of give you the two points of view of the change as I did actually in fact talk with uh, most of the members from Optic about the situation. So let's start off with Optic's recent results first, right? To detect whether or not we see why there might have been a need for some change or not. So starting at the end of 2015, so around November I would say, uh, this team had a great land performance, but this was back when they were still called Conquest, when they had first kind of put the team together, when they had first brought in Stanislaw to replace Rix, as Rix was playing with some of them uh, on some previous teams. And so they bring in Stanislaw to replace Rix, and they go to this SIVO Season 8 event in November 2015, and they get a top four finish. This includes beating Liquid, which is one of the top North American teams at the time, as well as beating the Danish team Dignitas. And this is the Dignitas that was still featuring uh, Pimp and AZ. Uh, so pretty good team still. Uh, beat them in a series and they wound up losing to Mouse Sports in the semifinals to get a top four finish. So this looked like a great performance from Optic. It was one of their, you know, or I guess they were still Conquest at the time. One of their best land performances to date for many of these players on the team. Uh, so it was a great result. We were looking to see if they were going to be able to build off of that uh, and, and what they were going to be able to accomplish. However, immediately after that event was over, they played a couple of more LAN events to end the year where they played at the I by Power Cup where they did pretty poorly. I think they got just like blasted by Cloud9 maybe. Uh, and then they lost to Complexity at the time back when Symphys and uh, Automatic were still on that Complexity lineup with Sanctinton and Roca and I believe Valens. Um, so they kind of just bomb out of that tournament, don't even really look competitive in it for the most part. And so this was a big step down from the performance of the Sevo Season 8 Finals just uh, you know a few weeks ago. Uh, then they go into the EPL Season 2 Finals where they, I think they had to play Fnatic first and they wound up losing that series, which was kind of understandable. Uh, this is where Fnatic's going on that big, you know, six tournaments in a row of first place finishes and such. And they were certainly a monstrous team, number one team in the world. But then they also wind up losing to Liquid, a team they had just beat not so long ago at the SIVO Season 8 Finals. They wound up losing to Liquid here to get eliminated from the tournament, uh, you know, pretty early on. So you go from one really great land event performance to a couple that weren't so hot. Uh, however, they did pick it up because they did beat CSGO Lounge in the Road to Vegas tournament in January to get into E-League. And, of course, this is after they've already picked up the Optic sponsorship. Um, from that, though, their big thing now is to try to qualify for the major, this uh, MLG Columbus event, the first major in North America. Later on, we find out it's the first million-dollar major. So this is kind of where Optic needs to be taking their next steps if they want to prove that they're an elite team in the North American scene is by making sure that they get into the major. But things don't go so well for them. They play in the minor where they were actually the favorite to win the tournament in most people's eyes, uh, and they wind up... Uh, losing to Splice in the opening playoff round uh, in a 1-2 series where they lose on Cobble in overtime. They win cash pretty convincing, but they lose Mirage, which was a, usually a pretty good matin for them. And they lose to Splice here, so they get knocked out of the minor. Don't even reach the final, so they were the favorites to win the whole thing, or one of the favorites at least to win the whole thing. So certainly a huge misstep. Uh, they still get another chance to try to qualify for the major by playing in the LCQ online where they lose the Winter Fox in a 1-2 series, uh, losing on Inferno and Cash in pretty one-sided fashions, in fact, that they did win the first map on Cobble. So another really disappointing tournament result here for Optic when, you know, Winter Fox is a team they should definitely be able to beat to, you know, progress on and, and have a chance to make it to the major qualifiers, but they couldn't get it done. So the whole MLG Columbus qualification process for Optic was really poor uh, and certainly not up to snuff with some of their you know, better results they were having in some of the online leagues as well as the SIVO Season 8 Finals. That wasn't so long ago from this, just a few months uh, away. And then they played a couple other smaller tournaments, uh, do not qualify for neither Katowice nor DreamHack Malmo. I think in the Katowice qualifiers, they actually wound up losing the Cloud9. 
uh, in that. And then in the Malmo qualifiers, they lose to Tempo Storm. So, I mean, they're losing the respectable teams, teams that are top in the region, but still they're not doing themselves any favors by climbing up the rankings by getting some better results and getting to some lands. But things do get better, uh, actually, recently, at least in their online league play. We haven't seen them play a land uh, pretty much since the North American minor, which was, I think, two or three months ago. But their online play did step up a bit. I mean, currently they sit with a 12 and 6, 12 and 6 record in the uh, ESL Season 3 Pro League, where they are certainly a playoff contender now because of that. They've gotten some good wins against Cloud9, um, as well as being able to take care of some of the lesser teams like Splice, like AGG, or the former AGG, now Kakona. Split Mass at Winter Fox was a little bit disappointing, but they still, you know, managed to get one map win out of that. They split Mass at Renegade, which was pretty respectable, and they had uh, losses to Selfless and Liquid. Still pretty good teams in the North American scene. Uh, but nonetheless, they have done well enough to put themselves in playoff contention for that league, so not too shabby. They also did win the first SIVO qualifier uh, for the Gfinity SIVO Pro League, the finals that are going to be taking place at the end of April. Uh, they're the first North American team to qualify and they did it by beating teams like liquid and selfless on the way to get it so uh, a good result there as well at least ensures that they will be at one land in the early part of this year to have a chance to try to prove themselves a little bit uh, also just looking at the team play they had you know some maps that they were pretty good on i would say that their overpass was usually quite good uh, in most of the games that i watched them play their cash was pretty good i mean they had a couple of slip ups but in general it was a map that they usually could rely on i would say their mirage was also pretty good and they were one of the few teams that were willing to play inferno uh you know teams like clg liquid cloud nine pretty much all auto ban inferno uh the only teams that really seemed to play it all were teams like optic or selfless uh that, that were willing to actually fight on it and actually had some 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 um some tactics on it that worked out well that were actually well versed on the map so that certainly did them some favors on uh, some particular matchups as well um so i mean their map pool was decent i think their trainer does too were a bit iffy like i said their cash could be hit or miss i mean there there was a couple of things that could be tweaked there but in general it wasn't too bad i think tactically they looked pretty sound compared to some of the other north american teams that struggle with leadership at the moment i think clg is probably the, the most tactically sound team for north america but optic was probably sitting there at number two as teams like liquid and cloud nine uh, and such are still trying to sort things out in the igl uh, role over the past couple of months and rely more on just kind of heavy firepower and aggression and like these executes that just rely on using their skills whereas it seemed a team like optic like clg were able to play the slower more methodical style if they wanted to they could mix in these uh, these uh, pretty, you know, well orchestrated executes. Uh, they had some talent on the team. I think Rush was um, one of the better entry fraggers in the North American scene. Uh, I think that someone like uh, Naf was a, a pretty versatile rifler that at times could have some pretty huge games. Stan's Law even at times could have some pretty huge games and seemed to be kind of like a second mind that Dats could bounce ideas off of. And Dat Stan's Law would even be kind of a versatile rifler. He would sometimes play peripherals. He would sometimes help with entry work with Rush. Uh, so they, they seem to have some talent on the team as well. And I thought Shazam actually wasn't that bad. He was putting up good numbers. Uh, but apparently the team and Shazam were not seeing eye to eye on a few things. Uh, and we already had seen signs that there were some struggles within optic uh over the last few weeks so many rumors were already coming out uh, about shazam leaving optic for quite some time before the official announcement um there was also this whole situation that took place with dreamhack austin where they were supposed to be playing in the qualifiers for that but for whatever reason they didn't and it was said publicly that that's had some type of emergency and that's why they uh didn't play in the qualifier uh but from some things that I have heard from around the scene, it's it's certainly possible that that may not have been true and that there may have been other reasons why they didn't participate in the Austin qualifiers, whether it just be like internal struggles or people not showing up or, or whatever. It seems like that may not be uh, as clear cut of an explanation as what might actually be there, but can't say 100% sure on that. Um, so that is something to think about, though, that you could see them having these little mishaps that, you know, maybe they normally wouldn't have. Um, I had also heard from teams practicing against Optic or, or just other NA pro teams that are involved, you know, in scrimmages and stuff telling me that Optic wasn't playing a whole lot. Uh, and that when they did play, they looked like they weren't playing seriously. You know, it seemed like they were uh, kind of goofing around a little bit in some of their scrims. They didn't really seem together. Um, and so these are some reports I've been hearing from teams that are playing against uh, Optic in scrimmages over the past few months.
all this leads up to this announcement about Shazam being removed from the team, of course, which happened earlier today before I started recording this vlog. Uh, now, I did reach out to the guys from Optic, uh, so I kind of wanted to get Shazam's side of the story as well as the side of the story from the rest of the team just to kind of give a balanced view of apparently what happened because that's what people usually like to hear about. Uh, and, of course... I'm not going to share everything that I was told because, you know, I, I have a level of respect for these guys and I'm not going to, you know, throw them under a bus or something like that or share things that they would rather keep private. But I can give you just a very general answer as to kind of the perspectives of what actually happened with this whole roster situation. And it seems like from Shazam's side of the story, he does mention, yeah, we weren't really practicing a whole lot recently, uh, you know, that the team environment wasn't so hot. Uh, which led to practice being tough uh, on the team. Apparently, they weren't getting along. Uh, Shazam says that his main issues seem to stem from, apparently, issues between him and Stan's law. Apparently, whenever they would scrim together, they wouldn't even really speak to each other very much. And they, they're basically just, you know, trying to force themselves to play because they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be practicing and trying to put up good results. But you could definitely tell that they weren't getting along. Uh, he also mentions that, you know, the other guys on the team were good friends. You know, Daps, Rush... Uh, and Stanislaw Law, uh, Company, NAF, were guys that were good friends. They played other games together. They hung out together outside of practice a lot. And it is certainly true that you can see that these guys have been together on previous teams. Of course, um, Daps, Rush, and NAF all came from, or yeah, I think those three came from the old Elevate lineup that was playing with XP3 a while ago. They were the ones who came over to merge with Ricks and uh Shazam, who were former Tempo Storm members to make this conquest team in the first place. And of course, you know, Dats and Naf have been together on several teams in the past, including the old Denial lineup from 2014 that had that one good ESCA land run. Uh, and so it is certainly true that these guys did have some ties and maybe Shazam wasn't as close to the rest of the team as the other people were. So that's one factor to keep up. Uh, and he also mentions that, you know, the team had, had told him straight up that they felt like he wasn't having enough impact with the op, uh, apparently was the other thing. And from talking with the other members of the Optic team, it seems like these stories match up pretty well. Um, you know, as far as the issues where, you know, the team felt that he wasn't having as much impact with the op, apparently they also felt he wasn't just dynamic enough with the op. He was, you know, maybe playing too static on CT sides, also felt that maybe he wasn't aggressive enough on the terrorist side. And from watching the games, I could see as to where, you know, that was an issue, though I would say I felt like I saw Shazam, when you compare him when he was on Conquest at the end of 2015 to today, it seemed like he did get a little bit more aggressive on the terrorist side seems like he was taking a little bit more uh, aggressive peaks. Maybe there were still times where he was a bit too passive, but it seemed like that was improving a bit, but I could certainly see, you know, where, where some of these issues might lie, where they didn't feel that his style was w what they wanted uh, for how they wanted to run their strategy. Uh, also, I've heard issues, though, where just like Shazam mentions that, you know, there were, you know, people clashing, attitudes clashing, that the rest of the team felt that, you know, that, you know, Shazam's attitude at times wasn't in the right place. Um, so basically what you can pull from all this when you just mesh kind of the two stories is that people weren't getting along, personalities were clashing, attitudes weren't right, practice environment was terrible. Uh, all these slides point to there being a real problem, there having to be a solution for it if this team was going to move on in a positive direction. Uh, especially when you're having disagreements about how you want to play. Uh, you know, what style you want to use, what overall strategy you want to use. People aren't on the same page on that, and they're not getting along on a, on a, on a personal and social level. Uh, obviously, this is kind of a recipe for disaster at that point. Uh, and so it's basically kind of a mutual split. Both parties knew that things weren't working, and they decided to go their separate ways. It's probably the best way that I can put it. And so they decided to pick up a player by the name of Mixwell. Now, Mixwell is, again, a, a Spanish player. I think he's 20 years old, so he's a younger guy. Uh, people will mostly know him from his play with G-Bots. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know him too much outside of the whole G-Bots thing. I think I had seen him play on a couple of other Spanish teams and a few different online matches I had watched or, or commentated. But they, uh, they were so far and few in between that I never really had uh, a great grasp of, of the, uh, the scene and the players there in, in Spain. Uh, but I do remember... Uh, watching him play in the ESL Barcelona Invitational, where he did look pretty good in some best of ones he played there. He played against Fnatic on Inferno and Dignitas on Cobble. Both those games were very close losses, like 16-13, 16-14 type games, and he did put up some good numbers and look pretty sharp in those games. 
Uh, also, within regional play over there, he does look pretty good. When you see his Spanish team, G-Bots, play up against the other teams in the region, like the Portuguese teams, like Kick or Alien Tech. I think they actually played like a recent LAN event where that featured those three teams, <coughs> where he played really well throughout all those games. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it looks like he, he's looked good, but he we haven't seen him a whole lot against top international competition, of course. Uh, now, when I spoke to Daps about, you know, why did you pick up Mixwell? Why did you choose him? Why did you feel that he was going to be a good addition? This is separate from the whole Shazam removal, but just why would you want Mixwell? Uh, and from what Daps told me, he spent a lot of time watching demos of Mixwell uh, from his play at ESL Barcelona as well as just, you know, regional play uh, within Spain. And that he just liked the way he looked. He liked his style of play, that he was a more aggressive guy. He was a guy that was looking for first kills a lot with the op. He was also the type of guy who was going to be able to be an entry rifler next to Rush at times when they're running five rifle setups. And he liked that idea to have kind of another entry guy that can work with Rush and that maybe frees up Stana's Law to be more of just a, a permanent peripheral role player with, with NAF or DAPS instead of you know, kind of some maps being an entry frag at rush and some maps not. So so maybe that kind of helps the role solidify a little bit better. Uh, and just in general, he thought he looked pretty skilled. He you know, thought his aim was good uh, and just liked his overall style of play. And the fact that he was going to be able to rifle and op and be pretty good at both. At least that's how he felt about Mixwell from watching him play. Uh, he also apparently liked his attitude and work ethic from speaking with him before they recruited him, just having meetings with him, I suppose, and getting to know him a little bit better. He seemed to just like his attitude uh, and, and what he brought to the table. You know, his English is fine, apparently, so language issues are apparently not going to be an issue for the team, which I know sometimes can be a concern whenever you bring in an international player. Uh, so apparently that's not to be a problem. Apparently his English is just fine, so it shouldn't be uh, something to concern yourself with. Um, so what does this do for Optic? What does this mean for Optic? Well, these guys are going to be playing in their first LAN event with this five in just a couple of weeks after I publish this video. Uh, they, like I said, they already qualified for the Gfinity Sevo LAN, uh, and so they'll be doing that very soon. Uh, also, I'm sure they might still have some matches left for ESL Pro League as well as they're in the ECS, so they'll be playing matches there. So we should see some online games from them over the next couple of weeks as well. Uh, and during this process, we'll just have to see what exactly happens. Again, I, I have a pretty good idea about how they play with their old five, but I'm not sure how much things will change. You know, will roles change? You know, with Mixwell coming into entry a bit with Rush, does this mean that Stanislaw's role is going to change on maps like Mirage, where he helped out a lot with mid control, or, you know, on Train, where he was really involved in executing the Outer Bomb site through T Connector and being kind of an entry guy with Rush, whereas on other maps like Cash, uh, he was more of a peripheral role player, you know, playing on the B side of the map on most defaults. You know, does, does this mean that Stan's loss position is going to change? Is his role going to evolve? Uh, how is Nas' role going to evolve? I had heard from Dats that possibly Nas might be doing a little bit more opping, so where they don't have like one solidified opper, like maybe it's going to be splitting duties between Naf and Mixwell, which Naf, of course, would op at times on the team in the past, usually in double op setups or if he had a good spawn for an op pick. Um, but maybe we see him pick it up more, so maybe his role is going to change a little bit. Uh, it seems like Rush's role will probably stay pretty much the same, and so will Daps's. So I think those two players are pretty set in stone. Uh, but with Mixwell coming in, it's, it feels like there's going to be a lot of moving parts. So this team could definitely have a much different look going forward. Uh, I think their overall strategy and style will probably be very similar, but just the positions and roles that people play may be a bit different. And with a more aggressive guy like Mixwell coming onto the team, maybe that does speed up the tempo a little bit uh, on their executes. I'm not really sure. We'll just have to kind of keep our eye on them in online play over the next couple of weeks and just see what they can do at the Sevo land to kind of get an idea of what this optic may look like going forward. Because, I mean, they really should be with their resources and some of the players they have on their team, one of the top teams in the North American leagues. I mean, they should be competing up there with CLG, Liquid, and Cloud9 for like a top four or top five spot within the region. Uh, granted, we do have teams like Luminosity, Tempo Storm, Renegades competing in the NA region, which also compete for the top. But if you're just looking at teams from North America, uh, Optic really should be a top four, top five team in the region. Uh, and so we'll see if they can do that. They already were kind of sitting there in the ESL Pro League and SEVO, so I thought they already were getting things together and moving in the right direction, but apparently, you know, the team and Shazam weren't seeing eye to eye, and so a change was made. Now, what does this mean for Shazam would be, I guess, the final question to answer with this video. Uh, 
going to be hard for him to find himself on another top team in NA just because all the other teams already pretty much have their opera set in stone. I mean, Cloud9 has got Skadoodle. Sure, they're going to hold on to him as best as they can. Uh, you know, you know, CLG has JDM, so there's no room there. Uh, Liquid has too many operas right now, apparently, with Kusta and Simple and trying to figure that whole roster situation out. So, But obviously no room for Shazam is kind of the point to make there. Um, he's already been taken off of Optic. So really the next teams that you, I think TSM is just content on using Symphys, um, as they are already in the period of bringing in like Twist and stuff like that. So really the teams that would make sense for him to still compete on like a decent North American team um, like a middle of the pack, but still kind of bordering on the lower tier, would probably be teams like Complexity or Splice, to be honest. Like, those seem to be the teams that would would make the most sense as far as they have an opening or they could make an opening for a player like Shazam, who probably still has some value for a team like those teams I've mentioned. Uh, apparently, he's already been scrimming with Splice a little bit, from what I understand, so that may already be a change that's in the works. Uh, I guess we'll just have to keep our eyes and ears open to see how that develops. But, yeah, I just wanted to make a video to talk a little bit about the uh, situation with Optic, you know, what was going on, what change was made and why, uh, and what it might mean for the future. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please follow and subscribe for more. Thanks a lot.